Today, I'm going to show you how to set up and configure the latest version of FreeNAS. To set up a FreeNAS device, you're going to need hardware with certain minimum requirements. Along with it, you are going to need a copy of the FreeNAS operating system, installation media, which can be a CD or a USB pen drive, and a USB boot drive for installation. Regarding the hardware, you're going to need a system with a 64-bit multi-core processor and 8 GB of RAM. You are also going to need an 8 GB USB boot device for installation and hard drives for storage. So this is the basic minimum requirement for the latest version of FreeNAS. For more information, you can visit the FreeNAS website. So for the operating system, go to the download section of FreeNAS website and download the latest copy of FreeNAS, which is going to be in an ISO format. Now you need to make the installation media. So you can do this either by burning the ISO image into a CD or write the image into a USB device with a software like Rafus for Windows. You can now proceed to install the operating system. So attach both the install media and the USB boot drive into the NAS system that you have built. Switch on your system and then go to your BIOS settings to choose the install media and then just follow the instructions to install the operating system. Here I am installing the operating system in a VMware virtual machine for demonstration purpose. Now you need to configure the system that you had just set up. Remove the installation media. Keep your boot device with the install operating system attached. Add your hard drives for storage. Set BIOS to boot from your hard drive. And power your system. So this is the screen that you are going to see when your system has been powered on. And this is my desk with my computer. To the right of it is the system where I am testing this FreeNAS and both of my computers is attached to the small router. If you are running your system without a monitor, then take the help of your router to know the IP address of your system. Then enter the IP address into a web browser. On the page that opens, enter your username and password. After that, you will be logged on into your system where the home page shows the various system information. Then go to storage where you can view the hard disks that is attached to the system. Now go to volume manager and over here you can add the hard disk that is attached to the system. You can give a volume name to the hard drive say hdd1 and go to click add volume. So this process is going to wipe out the entire hard drive, format it and mount the volume for you. Now you can click over the hard drive to get various information about the hard drive. You can change the permission settings of the hard drive. By default, the owner is root but you can change it according to your need. Now that our hard disk has been mounted, 
you can go to accounts then go to groups and click on add groups give a group name say storehouse and click on ok so our group storehouse has been created now go to users and click on add user now give a username say storehouse and add this user to the group that you have just created that is storehouse browse to the location where you want to create the home directory for the user or the storehouse should not have been there when you were creating it for the first time and it's and it gets created only when you have finished creating the user anyway so give the full name of the user enter uh, email ID give a password to the user that you have created and click on OK so our user has been created with a home directory after creating the groups and users you can now go to sharing and share the user folder with a protocol like SMB just browse or enter the path you want to share then you can give a name to this share say storehouse and click on ok so if everything has been done correctly we will be able to browse this folder through any computer that is attached to the network browse to the folder enter the username and password 